Hi there, my name is Catherine and I'm one half of MKDB Studios and we have just released our first game called Signals and I thought it would be fun just to go over the playthrough for chapter one which is called Arrival. So I guess we'll just get into it. After following the coordinates found during an archaeological dig, we arrive on Virgo Omega where a strange device has been spotted. If the writings found on Earth are to be believed, the device is a portal through interstellar space that'll take us distances we could have only ever hoped to cross. Financed by the Artificial Life and Advanced Network, Allen Corporation, we will want to ensure the discovery and exploitation of resources to satisfy their investment. Given the signal device's current state, we will need to attempt repairs and continue our research. Okay. Okay, so here we have landed on our home planet and we can see over here we have this signal device. So if we go to the top bar and we just have a look, on the left hand side here we have a breakdown of our outgoings and if we come over again we have a breakdown of our income. If we, if you just hover over those with your mouse then it will show you the breakdown which is useful and then in the center here we have the amount of money that we start with and also we have a time pause or speed up or slow down. It can go from times one times two or times four. To pause it is spacebar and then when it unpauses it'll come back to the time that it was before. I'm using the keyboard shortcut for these which is just X and Z. So Z to slow time down and X to speed time up. In the middle here we have a help menu. Next to the middle top bar we have the number of signals that we are unlocking and then the date in the run mode and in some of the campaign the time is an aspect that we need to keep an eye on. If I come down to the bottom bar then we can see on the left hand side we have the build menu which has what we can build on this planet and then the destroy menu which has a reclaimed building as well as remove forests so if I just remove a couple of forests here that can be useful if you need to make some room to put a solar array down and then right click just to get rid of that. So that's those two. In the center here we have a signal next to a 0% because we have not started to unlock the device yet. We also have underneath three resource icons with three zeros next to each one. That'll tell us how many of that particular resource is being collected at any one time which is useful. Next to that on the right hand side we have the economy menu. So this will tell us what resources there are overall, the quantity that we would be collecting, as well as the value for each of the resources, whether it's going up or down. And then we also have the overview, which is showing us how much outgoings we've just spent on taking down those forests. So it seems a lot at the moment, but trust me, it gets quite detailed. Okay, let's close that. And then right on the bottom bar, on the right hand side, we have the planetarium, which is a very useful menu to use. We have here, we can see what planet we are on currently at the top and what other resources we have on this planet. So we have aluminium and we have gold and we have plutonium, which is great. And then if we come over to the magnifying glass, it really doesn't tell us anything at the moment because we haven't placed down any harvesters. So we will get to that because if we come over here, then you can see then on the left hand side of the screen, we have a bit of a task menu that will become more detailed or less detailed depending on how many tasks we have completed. So it says build harvesters zero out of five and it has a question mark next to it. Now it opens up the help menu specifically for harvesting. So let's have a look at that quickly. It says to harvest resources, you must first place a harvester, which itself needs power from a solar array and access to a trade outpost placed on the surface. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom bar and open the build menu. And here we have all of our buildings that we can build. So really to start off with, you only need these three main ones at the bottom. You need the harvesters, the solar array, and the trade outposts. Those are by far the three buildings that you will use the most or build the most in this entire game. So if we read harvesters, it says harvests the resource on the tile it is placed on until depletion. It costs 
5,000 G's to place and it will cost me 50 G's per month which is about 10% and then it needs 1,000 watts of power. If we look at the solar array it says it generates 15,000 watts, it's affected by the amount of sunshine on a planet's surface, it'll cost me 10,000 G's to place, it will cost me 100 G's a month to run and it doesn't need any power input because it's already giving that as an output. And then the Allen Trade Outpost says sales resources harvested to the market. So that's what you need in order to actually run the harvesters so that they will make some money, which is what we want to do. It requires 15,000 G's to place. It costs me 150 G's per month to run and it requires 5,000 watts in order to run. And here, actually, I'm going to quickly go into this because we have gold. I can see this. It says, Alan needs gold. Please harvest 570, a fund of 299,220 Gs will be unlocked for your research on delivery. Okay, I'm going to accept this and I'm going to start placing some harvesters. So I want a harvester on this gold. That's an aluminium, aluminium, gold, aluminium, and that is our five harvesters down. So we've already ticked off one of the things that we need to do, which is great. Next, we want to open the solar array. Now this is useful because it shows you what the range is for that particular solar array, and whether or not it will power the particular building that you need it to or not. So I shall put that down. And then next is the Allen Trade Outpost, so I'll pop that there. Now you only need one of those, the Allen Trade Outpost per planet, <laughs> which is good. Um, so you don't need to waste loads of money placing those down. Okay, let's close that. And if I move around more, then I can see here that there is some plutonium, which is great. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts. If I come back to the build menu, then it shows me at the bottom here. It's the shortcut number one for the harvester. Shortcut number two for the solar array and shortcut number three for the Allen Trade Outpost. So those keys are what I'm going to be using the most while I'm on this particular planet surface. So if I move around, I usually like to start with the solar array because that tells me how many resources I'm going to get into a particular range of the solar array. So I only need one solar array, for instance, for these four resources here. So I'll place that there. And if I wanted to, then I could just keep placing solar array. So I think I'll place that there because that actually gets quite a few in that one. But uh, that's all I want for now. So I'm going to right click to get rid of that. I'm going to press one in order to bring up the harvesters. Now you can see that I can't place them on any hex tiles that don't have a resource on them. So I'm going to place that there, that there, that there, that there. It means that you won't accidentally place down harvesters and waste loads of money that way. So let's place them over here. They're already powered and they're already working because down here we already have a, an Alan Trade outpost. Okay, so if I come up here and look on the left hand side, it's a bit pushed up at the moment, but I'm sure we'll fix that. At the top, we can see the gold that we're harvesting for Alan Corp right now. Something I'll just quickly go into. So what I wanted to show you in the resources tab is that if you look under quantity, gold is currently not being logged and it means that the resource isn't losing value. So those Alan Corp tasks are really useful for making a bit more money without affecting the value of the resource overall. Extremely useful especially when you come into the run mode where you're having to get through more than one signal at a time which means you have to be very aware of what resources are losing value and what are gaining value. They gain value every time they're not being harvested. Actually let's look at the overview menu because as you can see here now it has updated it goes bi-monthly, so we can see that I wasn't making any money, and then suddenly I was. So I'm actually up over 350,000, which means that I'm making a profit. Very good. Okay, right, waffled on enough about that. Let's have a look at the left-hand side and the task menu. So now that our Alan Corp thing has finished, that's gone. So now we have opened the sector map to investigate nearby systems for resources. And again, there is a help button right there. So if we click on that, then it shows us travel. And it says you have two ways to travel. 
you can access the sector map where you can select a system then choose a planet to travel to. The other way is to open the planetarium which list visited and favorited planets. Let's go through that right now. So if we open up in the corner we have the sector map and that lovely little noise there was us completing that task. This shows us how many systems there are in our particular sector and as you can see we start in the Virgo system and orbiting around the Virgo star are one two three there was a fourth planet and it's just coming back into view now we have thought about that and if a planet is out of view then you can come down here to the big white sun button at the bottom and that will speed up the orbit of a particular system so that you can actually grab all of the planets to have a look at so we have Virgo Delta. On here we have the resources that are on that planet. So we have aluminium, we have iron, and we have gold. Down here we have the light index, which is at 0 0.7, which is in alignment with how far away this particular planet is from its sun. And this is useful to bear in mind when you're using your solar arrays. So if you don't have enough light on a particular planet, then you might need to use more than one solar array to power certain buildings. So that's something to bear in mind. This tells us how many harvesters we have on this planet, it's currently zero, and when we last visited, which was never because we haven't been there yet. And then at the bottom here, it says how much it costs us to travel. If we travel to this particular planet in the system, because it's free, because it's in the same system, it tells me aluminium has seen a decrease of minus 5.50% as a result of a recent mining discovery in the Oort cloud. Okie dokie. So if I open my economy menu and I go down to aluminium, oh, I'm harvesting too much aluminium. It's already down 45%. Not helped by that recent discovery of more aluminium in the Oort cloud. So I have two choices now. I can either continue collecting aluminium, which it tells me it's currently at 135 per unit, or I can go back and reclaim the harvesters that I've got on aluminium and try and help that recover. But I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. I'm just going to let it do its thing and keep depreciating in value. <laughs> okay, close that. All right, so if I look back on the task menu on the left hand side, it tells me I need to harvest silicone, zero of 90, harvest titanium, zero of 90 and harvest lithium zero of 90 and the icons for those match the icons at the bottom in the center well they'll tell me how much is being harvested at any one time so currently we're not harvesting any because we haven't found any yet so that's why we need to open the sector map and then we want to start looking around let's have a look at the different planets now this is something to bear in mind not every planet is going to have a resource you will find that in quite a few if not all of the systems there will always be a barren planet at least one i won't travel to that one let's see if there's one in our system there is is this one let's travel there so here we just have the barren planet and as you can see there's absolutely no resources on it whatsoever nothing there for us anyway let's get back to the sector map let's see what about you so over here, we can see that this particular planet has titanium, very useful. This particular planet also has oil, which is very interesting, as well as gold and iron. But I can see that it's, all, it's also going to cost us an awful lot of money together. So I think we'll hold off on that one and we'll just favorite it by pressing the add favorite star. So that'll now end up in our planetarium window. In fact, let's have a look at that planetarium. So in here now, at the top is always going to be the planets that you've visited most recently and the very top is the planet that you're on. Here we see at the bottom of this list there is one with the teal star and that is the one that we've just favorited. This is useful if I want to do direct jumps to particular planets that I've either been to or that I've favorited. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to continue looking around the sector map. But while we're here, let's check out the magnifying glasses for each of these. If I go to Virgo Omega and I press the magnifying glass, then it shows me the harvesters that I have on that planet. Some of them are still harvesting, but most of them have finished. Now, if I am not on that planet and I clicked on the magnifying glass next to the harvester, then it won't do anything. But if I am on that particular planet and I have harvesters down, then I can use this right hand side menu with the magnifying glasses just to 
quickly jump the camera to that particular harvester, which can be useful. Anyway, let's get back into the sector map and have a look around. Let's look down here. This has a lot of planets. And here we have lithium. And we know then that there's a component resource lithium in there. Let's see, is there anything else that could catch our attention? Not really. Okay, so that has been favorited. Let's come down to the next one. And here we have titanium. So we found two with titanium, one with lithium and none with silicon yet, but I'm gonna favorite that one. We know that's there, anything else? These are all barren planets. Oh, this particular planet has diamond. So that's something to bear in mind. Diamond is a tier three resource, which means it's worth a lot of money. So I'm actually gonna add that one to favorites, come back and then have a look around. That one has silicon. I'm gonna make a note of that. All right, so if I come back into my planetarium menu, then I can see all of my favorited planets there. So I can see that I've got ones with titanium, lithium and silicon. I'm gonna look for the cheapest jumps and just make those. So I can see here that there's the Shubba Alpha it has lithium and it will only cost me 22,000 G. So I'm gonna hop over to there. I can see here that there's copper, and I do believe these are lithium. I want to see if I can get both of these in one solar array. So I'm going to click two for my solar array. That means I'm going to need two solar arrays. That's not a problem. I'm going to move then this over here so that I can grab all this copper as well. So plonk that down. And then I think I'm going to plonk that down there. Shortcut number one to open the harvesters. Plonk them down on the resources that I need and they're not doing anything at the moment because we need to press shortcut three and put down an Allen trade post. Right click to get rid of that. That's harvesting now and if you look at the bottom middle bar, right in the middle in fact it shows us that lithium is now harvesting. Back into the planetarium, let's have a look. Again we want to look for tiny jumps or, or cheaper jumps I should say and I can instantly see that we have a choice between Mullifine Alpha and Melef Gamma. Both have titanium on them, but one of them is going to cost me 45,000 Gs and one of them is going to cost me 2,000 Gs. So I think I'm going to go for the 2,000 Gs. Also in the Melef system, there is the diamond planet. So I think I'm going to go to the diamond planet first. So let's go over there. And here we have a really pretty red planet. Right, I'm going to get harvesting these. I'm going to start from this corner. So I bring up two for my solar array, press one, one, and three for my Allen trade outpost. Now we're harvesting all of the diamond on that planet because I'm only going to get through one of the signals in this chapter. I'm not worried about diamond losing its value because I will be finished by the time these guys have finished doing their thing. And I want to go to Melef Gamma, which has titanium as a resource. That looks like titanium. So let's get you guys harvesting. And there's the other one. And if I do that, I can fit in that copper over there. Okay, back into the planetarium. I can see here at the bottom of this list that Alarachis Beta will cost me 200, sorry, 200. It'll cost me 128,000 Gs to jump straight there from this particular planet that I'm on. And here we are. That looks like silicon. So let's grab you. Boop, boop, boop. And then this one again over here. Uh, typically there'll be two of these component resources on one planet, like two stacks, but I have seen less than that. I've seen one stack on a planet, but that's relatively rare. Usually there's two, for the majority there's two. I don't think I need anything else in terms of the other resources because I'm rinsing the value of diamonds right now. If I have a look in my economy menu, I'm currently collecting over 800 diamond and the, <laughs> I'm tanking its price. Even though it's still at 479 per unit price, I have tanked it by almost 60% in value. But let's have a look at the overview menu and see that I'm still making a profit. Oh, I'm up over a million. In fact, I'm over a million more than when I started. That's very good in the task menu. It says build a research complex next to the signal to start the repairs. So let's 
hop back over to Virgo Omega. There we go. And here we can see that a lot of our harvesters have finished. So I'm going to go to reclaim these harvesters that have already finished. So if I go to the destroy menu, reclaim building, then I can just reclaim those. And I do believe that I actually get some money back from those. And if I come up and hover here, it says I've just reclaimed 6,000 Gs from tidying up all of that. So let's get rid of these as well. I don't need a trade outpost. Oh, I might. Oh, I might. Oh. Whoops. Okay. Let's focus on making some space around the signal for starters. So I'm going to shortcut F for forest, or deforest, and get rid of these trees. Make some room. And I'm going to put down a solar array about here because that will give me enough coverage. And I can see here that there is some plutonium that I have missed. So I'm just going to harvest that. And silly me, I got rid of my Alan trade outpost, so I'm going to plonk that there so that, that can keep harvesting. Okay, build a research complex next to the signal. If I look in my build menu, uh, shortcut four. So I'm going to press four and this brings up this wonderful building. Now it doesn't want to go anywhere else really other than right next to the signal. So that leaves me with two hex tiles that I can put it on. So I'm just going to plonk it there. Perfect. And over here it says build staff quarters to host the research complex staff and build five farms. So I'm going to open the staff quarters. It's currently called outpost. It needs fixing. So let's plonk that on there. That cost me 50,000. Here it says host five employed at the research complex requires 10 of food. So then if we open up the farm. It says produces two food per harvest cycle of 20 days. Requires two water to operate. So I'm going to plonk one there and it's telling me that the farm needs water, the staff needs food and the research complex needs staff. I'm going to build a water treatment plant which says produces 10 water when powered must be placed near a water source. Let's open up that one. As you can see it's got a much bigger range than the solar array. That's because on some habitable planets, like if we came down here for instance, then finding a water source in this area might be a bit tricky. So if we place it here, then at least it'll cover a bit more ground. So let's plonk that there. And then this said that each farm produces two and we need 10. So I'm gonna put down another four of these so we've got five of them. And that's what it says, build five farms over there. This is a good stage to speed time up. We've got more than enough money coming in. I'm not bothered about the economy menu and the value of each thing because look at that diamond. Diamond is down 183%. That's a lot. It's currently worth 265 Gs per unit. Whereas if we look at oil, it's up 24% and it's currently almost a thousand Gs per unit. Anyway, let's close that. That was me waffling on and in the meantime we can see the status bar above the farms has continued ticking away. If I wanted to I could speed time up but I'm actually going to look down here at the bottom because the staff are being fed which means that they can then go to work in the research complex and the signal is currently being unlocked. It's currently at 63%. I not only have the research complex with the farms and the staff quarters all down there but I also have enough component resources. So that's something to bear in mind. If you don't have enough component resources, it will stall your ability to unlock the signal. I'm just gonna speed this up two times. 90, 93, 96, there we go. Chapter one completed. We have successfully started the signal device and it does appear to be a portal and run mode is now unlocked. So you only need to complete the first chapter of the campaign for run mode to be unlocked, which we will be very shortly integrating a weekly challenge, which is where the run mode seed will be shared. And if you do take part in the weekly challenge, then I will also be posting my scores on the Discord, which you're welcome to do as well. The link to the Discord is on our Steam page, which is Signals on Steam. And that's everything.